Well, hello folks out there in YouTube land. Got a fun show for you. We're going to talk about the UTSA game. We're going to give out uh, grades. And also we're going to talk about Run Joe Run and uh, the cheetah got loose. <laughs> All right, so that was a good game. Look, overall, 45 to 14, that, that's a rock-solid game. And it started out amazing. That first run by Joe Milton was awesome. I mean, that changed the game, in my opinion. It, was, it almost felt like it ended the game in a way. Like, all the momentum just went 1,000% in our direction. And it felt like it was a matter of how much we're going to win by. Because the defense, all of a sudden, they had to treat our offense completely different. Because they couldn't get burned again by Joe. And did you see that speed? Those safeties couldn't catch him. And they had a decent angle on him. That really surprised me. I thought for sure they would catch him. Nope. And they're half his size. So he's always had that speed. And then, of course, we saw the speed by the cheetah, one Dylan Sampson. So we're going to get into all these stats, give out grades, etc. All right. So obviously, we were up 31 to nothing after the first two quarters. So, I mean, it's hard to be anything but pleased with that. Joe Milton, 18 for 31. Look, he was like 14 for 16 his first almost two quarters till he got hurt. And unfortunately, he got his knee banged up a little bit. Now, he did bounce up from that, but he wound up putting a brace on it. And he didn't play the same after that. He lost his accuracy. And really, this is a tough one because I've wanted to give Joe a really good grade. I thought I was going to give him this grade for the whole game. But what I'm going to do is break it up into two. Before he got hurt or before he got sacked, which seemed to throw him off, I'm going to give him this grade. Yep, I've been, want, I've been wanting to give him a good grade. Unfortunately, the whole rest of the game, I'm just going to give him a flat old C because he wasn't very good after that. He did make some nice tosses towards the end there, but uh, he just was off. Obviously, he wasn't going to run with that brace on there, and I don't think that was like a serious brace. I think it was there just as a precaution. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been in there playing because we have two other quarterbacks they could have put in. But I think he, he was not coming out. Look. If you'll notice, they had Nico over there ready to go, and Joe was like, oh, no, I'm fine. And I understand that as a former Division I player myself, and yes, it was golf. But let me tell you something. When you lose your starting position or you get put onto the bench for a little while, the last time that happened with Joe, you know, he hurt his uh, ankle up in Pittsburgh, he spent two years on the bench. So I 1,000% understand he was going to be out there if he had to drag himself out there. He was like, no, 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 no backup. I'm fine. My leg is fine. Just a flesh wound. <laughs> Merely a flesh wound. Joe was going out there. It didn't matter. <laughs> and I look, I don't blame him one bit. He was not about to get replaced. So I think he, he might not have uh, told that doctor everything about that knee, but he played the rest of the game, and then he started kind of getting back together towards the end. So I think he'll be okay, but that – that ability to run changes the game dramatically. If he runs the ball, he becomes a nightmare to deal with. And I've, I've never understood why he won't run. I was running. And you just saw what he can do. He literally left the safeties in his dust. I couldn't believe it. So he's been able to run this whole time. The problem is he's had everybody and their brother tell him what a great arm he is. You've got the greatest arm in the world. Oh, look how far you throw it, blah, blah, blah. So he wants, to be, he wants to show everybody that it's right. You know, I'm in the pocket and I can be Tom Brady, whatever. He needs to be Cam Newton. And he actually mentioned that he's been watching Cam Newton's uh, highlights. And uh, Coach Heupel actually brought that up. And I'm quoting him, but he said he's going to have to use his feet. So obviously Heupel's been pushing him to run. And you know how Hendon Hooker was last year. I mean, his ability to run just terrorized teams. And Joe could be doing the same thing if he chose to do so. Even if you're just running for four or five yards, that changes everything. Because what happens if you don't, they can totally focus on the running backs when you do that option play and you act like you're going to hold on the ball and they know you're not going to. It doesn't matter. So they're just going to focus and nail the running back. Well, now, instead of it being second and 11 or 12 or 9, it's second and 4. Because they didn't know who to focus on, it they had to hesitate, and all of a sudden our running back gets six yards. So it's super important that Joe run at least seven, eight times a game, and he's capable of breaking one loose, obviously, 
because it's not like UTSA had a bunch of slow guys back there. They're a decent team, and they've won a lot the last two years. I know they didn't have their fearless leader, Frank Harris, due to a toe injury. He's got turf toe, which is the hyperextension of the toe, and it takes you know sometimes eight weeks to get better. And he had an off week coming up and then their first conference game. So I was not a bit surprised they held him out. I would have done the same thing as a coach because you can still win your conference. But if you lose Frank Harris in this game and he re-injures it and you lose him for another six weeks, you're doomed. So anyway, I, I was real pleased with the first half by Joe Milton and even more pleased that he finally ran the ball. Man, watching that guy for a couple of years now and he just never wants to run. And he finally did and look at the success. Our running backs played really well. Look, Dylan Sampson came in. Uh, Jalen Wright got uh, banged up. And uh, Dylan Sampson came in, the cheetah. And he ran for 139 yards. His long was 44. He had a fantastic game. That's what, a 12-yard average. Really pleased. Joe is part of that with 89 yards. Jabari had a very nice game, 61. Jalen was doing fine, but uh, got banged up a little bit. So we ran for 300 yards. So the running back, and yes, I include Joe as a running back, had a fantastic game. You run for 300 yards, that is nothing but this. Exactly. You run for 300 yards against anybody, you're going to get an A++++. The wide receivers, as you can see, they had 18 uh, catches for 209 yards. I'm just going to give them a good solid B. I thought our wide receivers were fine. Uh, nothing in particularly uh, good or bad. Ramel Keaton got a little banged up. I think Brew did a little bit. Um, I think they'd have gone back in if they didn't been needed, but we were so far ahead it didn't matter. Poor old Cam Selden had a bad play, man. He had the Bama play. If you're going to make that mistake, make it in the UTSA game and we got a huge lead. It was 14 to nothing at the time. Had that been against Alabama or Georgia, that would have been soul-crushing. Can't ever do that. You don't mess around with that football on a punt like that. That's what Alabama did last year, and it played a huge role in that victory for us. And I thought Nick Saban was going to lose his mind when that happened. Don't touch the ball when it's bouncing around on a punt. Come on. He must have thought that the other team had touched it and that it was a free ball. That had to be what his thinking was. On defense, we had, uh, let's see, Aaron Beasley had nine tackles. He had a TFL. I think we had four sacks. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we had four sacks, which is uh, really nice. Tyler Barron played a great game, I thought. Uh, he was pressuring that quarterback like crazy. He didn't get to him that much, but, man, he terrorized him back there. Caleb Herring had a sack. Omar Norman Lott had a sack, and he missed ha the first half of the game due to that suspension. And look how many. I mean, everybody got to play in there, got to play in this. Uh, McDonald, didn't he have an interception? I think we had two INTs, and he had one of them. Yeah, McDonald had one of them, and Warren Bur Burrell had one. So two interceptions, so that's great. D. Williams was dying to return a ball, and he's so dangerous. Two for 34. And Campbell finally missed a kick. He missed like, a, I don't know, it was almost 50 yards or something. And he darn near made it. He's a good kicker. Jackson Ross had a nice uh, game. I think he's uh, solved his shanking issue. The O-line, man, we need Cooper Mays to get back in this game. I hope he can play the South Carolina game. He keeps stressing out, but then he doesn't feel like that he's up to playing. And look, you know, he, he's got a bit of a, an issue that, you know, you, you don't want to rush it because then that can make you regress. But hopefully he can play the South Carolina game. We need him back in there. It was flat out due, not only for timing and to be able to go fast, but we can't have any more missed, ta missed blocks like we had. That led to that sack. So I'm going to have to give the old line. I have no choice. I, I'm going to give him this grade. C plus. Oh, no, it can't be. Yep, the C-plus. Not horrible, but uh, you can't get your quarterback smacked around back there. So hopefully they'll do a better job. And I think with Cooper Mays in there, they will. I just don't know when he's going to be back. You know, he keeps stressing out, so that's a good sign. But um, we'll see. That's always a game-time decision, it seems like. And as far as the coaches, I'm going to give the coaches a good solid A. And the reason being, they got Joe to run. Heupel finally got him to run. He also told him, that he's got to work that pocket, and I saw him doing that. I also saw him climbing the pocket and escaping and making some nice plays. I hadn't seen him do that a whole lot. He was really working the pocket, so they've been working hard with him to run and to be more elusive and to start uh, being more athletic because I think he could be a tremendous athlete in, as quarterback if he would just allow himself to be, and maybe he's just got to be pushed into it, which is obviously what they did in this game. 
But uh, I can tell you, I feel so much better about him when he runs. I just I know a guy that's six foot five with that speed, two thirty five, is going to be successful running the ball in our offense. He, there's just no way. There's no way he should not be. And we just saw evidence of it where he ran for almost hundred yards, and it was eighty nine yards. But of course, on the sacks, you do lose some yards. So he probably ran for over hundred yards total, which I don't see us losing a ball game where he runs for over hundred yards. As a matter of fact, even with the poor second half after the injury. A 200 yards, two touchdowns, and then you see where he ran for 89. If he does that on a regular basis, he has 300 yards total in that running. That will drive that defense crazy. They won't know what to do with him. They really won't because now they won't be able to pin their ears back on him. If he takes off and shoots past one of those edge rushers that shoots the gap, I mean, he's gone. And they'll quit that pinning their ears back going after him because they'll be like, oh, crap. That's why they didn't sack Hendon Hooker very much because they were scared to death of his legs. Hendon truly was a nightmare. I would have hated to go up against him. Now, we're getting ready to go up against a guy that's kind of playing like Hendon with uh, Spencer Radler. He has been playing really well, and we're going to have to stop him. We're going to be talking all about that this week. But anyway, I did want to give those grades, and it was so nice to see Joe run, and hopefully his knee will you know, uh, feel better this week. I think it must not be too bad, or he wouldn't have been out there the whole second half, no matter how, <laughs> no matter how uh, much he doesn't want to give up that position, even for a moment. And again, I, I can't blame him one bit. If I'd lost my position for two years, I'd be out there. I don't care if I had to be out there with a walker. You're not pulling me. So anyway, I did want to give out these grades. And this was a fun one to do. I like it when we have a big win like this. It felt like old times in that first half. Remember? When we were up 28 to nothing, we were up 14 to nothing after about five or six minutes. It really felt like old times. I was like, is Hendon here? What's going on? Why are we running the offense the way we always have? I couldn't understand. We were going fast. Joe was running. It's like, what's happening here? But it was fun. It was great until he got until he got his knee bumped. So anyway, and I do want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor of this uh, video, and that is Sevierville Golf Club. They have two great golf courses. They're right off Highway 66 in Sevierville. Super easy to get to. The courses are in fantastic condition right now. I played there uh, twice last week and it was perfect. It, the weather was perfect. The conditions were ideal. The fairways are lush. The greens putted great. Man, they putted good. And there was a lot of golf out there, but you know, you got two golf courses. So they had, uh, they had one tournament, must have been 400 people in it, man, and everybody had a blast. But if you want to have a good time and, ha and play a couple of great golf courses, the River and the Highlands at Sevierville Golf Club are ideal. They also have a tremendous practice facility, it's right in the middle of the course. As you can see, it's right here. It's really fun to work on your game there. You can hit any club you want. Um, He's got a beautiful backswing. Dad, oh, he got all of that one. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on its feet here. He's From a wedge to a driver, it's uh, it's not one of those little short ranges, if you've ever, if you've ever seen those at a uh, resort. And also, um, if you want to get something to eat, you can just pop right into Mulligan's. They have excellent food and real good service. So be sure to check out Sevierville Golf Club next time you're up there or if you're a local, because even though it's called a club, it is open to the public, so anybody can play. They also have memberships for locals. And the golf carts even have a computers on them that will tell you exact yardage to the pin. It's, it's just it's a terrific place to play. Most of the time, you can drive right to your golf ball, even if it's uh, unless it's just poured down rain or something. And I did want to give out a report card after what I thought was an excellent game. I was real pleased with it. Joe ran and the cheetah ran, and I think that's going to be uh, – and if we do that in the future, I think we'll end up having a real nice season. We'll see. We've got an important game coming up against South Carolina. It's a revenge game, and uh, look, you know, they're looking, they're looking better. That is, that's a better than a 2-2 two and two team. They may be 2-2, two and two, but one of those losses was to Georgia at Georgia, and then, of course, they got beat by North Carolina. They've got two players on offense that are really balling out, and one's the quarterback, and that's always tricky. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover the Vols and all our opponents and all that good stuff. If you've not subscribed, it's on your right, my left. Hit that little button right there. It will help you get my videos, and it will not cost you a dime. And right over here is the most recent video that YouTube thinks you'll like based on an algorithm. I don't know Al, and I don't know his rhythm, but it's something to do with viewing history. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.